is Courtney. I hope you guys are having a great week. Um, we started our theme all about birds. And since we're learning about birds, I thought we'd do a really fun activity that combines doing a little bit of an art project and a science activity. And this is a project that you can put up outside, which is really good for spring when the birds come out. We'll be doing that in just a minute. But first I thought we'd read this book together. The Little Book of Backyard Bird Songs. So these are gonna be some birds and over here we're gonna hear the sound they make. And you might hear them if you go outside on like a bird nature walk, you might hear some of these bird songs. Okay. The Little Book of Backyard Bird Songs. House Wren. Look out for this lively songbird, especially in the spring, as it flits around the undergrowth. Given its size, its song is surprisingly loud. So even though it's really little, its song is really loud. It's a loud series of rapid trills that vary strongly from region to region. The boy sings to attract a mate and to defend its territory, while females sing a short refrain in answer. Both become quiet and secretive during the winter. So they're really loud in spring, but not as loud in the winter. They're found in backyards, parks, and shrubberies. They feed on insects, spiders, and snails. Their nests, they nest in holes and in nest boxes. They lay five to eight white speckled eggs. And here, you can see their picture is their song. Let's listen. pretty song. So that's the house wren. Let's do the next one. Oh, oops. American goldfinch. This energetic bird is a popular visitor to backyard feeders, especially if you leave out sunflower or, or bird seed. In the wintertime, it gathers in large flocks to feed on the seeds head of plants such as teasels and thistles. The male goldfinch's song is a series of high-pitched trills and warbles, and it can often be heard singing while it flies. That's a pretty bird. They're found in backyards, woodlands, and farmlands. They eat seeds and sometimes insects. They are nests in forks or shrubs of trees, and they lay four to six white, um, blue-white eggs with spots. Isn't that pretty? This is the American goldfinch. Did you know that males are mostly yellow when breeding in spring and they're a dull brown in winter? So the, the boy birds, and you'll find with birds, the male birds are normally pretty bright and colorful and the females are a little darker in color. But the boy birds in this, this kind of bird are brown in the winter, but they come yellow in spring. Let's listen to the American goldfinch. Oh, that's pretty. Okay, next. Oh. Still going. Okay. This is the red wing blackbird. I think it gets that because the bright red spot on its wing. Looking like a soldier wearing a uniform, the male red wing blackbird is easy to spot, unlike the streaky brown female. Not only do the male shoulder blazes say, look at me, so does his singing heard from early spring onward. He delivers his distinctive song for hours while perched on stalks and and in around marshy breeding grounds. So this is the boy and you can tell that because of its bright red shoulder. Um, it's found in marshes and waterways, so kind of near swamps. So not exactly beaches, but really wet places. It feeds on insects, seeds, fruit, and snails. It's nests in low woodland areas, meaning near the water, and it lays two to four speckled blue green eggs. All right, let's listen to the black, red winged blackbird. Oh, that's an interesting song. Oh, listen to that. All right. This is the killdeer. This is the killdeer. You may hear male killdeers calling out during the breeding season as they circle overhead. This is one of the few birds that's named after its call. And though technically a shorebird, it's likely to be found by the sea. Their nests are shallow scrapes and are often located in most unlikely places, such as parking lots. Oh, you might find them in a parking lot. That's interesting. The adults use a shrill D sound to ward off intruders. They feed in open ground and near water. Or, I'm sorry, they are found in open ground and near water. They feed on insects, spiders, snails, and seeds. Their nests are shallow scrapes on bare ground, so they nest on the ground. And they have full, they lay four beige eggs with dark spots. All right, let's listen. Ready? Oh, hi. Hmm, 
That's really different than the other calls we heard. It's really high. It sounds really high. Hi, hi, sweetie. We're learning about birds right now. Can you go play over there? Thank you. Okay. House finch. The house finch delivers its bright, warbling song from a high open perch. The male and female will call to each other during the breeding season. That's when they start to have babies. Though males can be heard at other times of the year too. Apart from its complicated song, listen out for its sharp call notes. These may be used to drive away other birds, especially at feeders where it's often aggressively dominant. So this one likes to have all the food to itself, it sounds like. They are found in backyards, parks, and fields. They eat seeds, fruits, and sometimes insects. They nest in trees and in holes of buildings. And they lay up to six pale blue eggs with spots. We hear that a lot of these eggs have spots. All right, let's listen to this bright red one right here. very pretty call and very specific for just this type of bird. means or unique means it's the only one like it the great horned owl Ooh, look an owl that's interesting this is one of the most common owls of North America and the horns are in fact just long ear tufts so it's called horns because ears are kind of like horns but really there's big ears the male hoots to establish its territory so it's say like this is my home and to find a mate from late fall onward. If you hear two howls hooting each other, the lower sound is the male, even though he's smaller. Owlets, which are baby owls, are born very early in the spring, and they scream for food. They're found in woods, fields, and urban, which means kind of near cities areas. They feed on mostly small animals and birds. They nest on stick platforms, usually in trees, and they lay one to four white eggs. Okay, let's listen to the great horned owl. Mm, we definitely kind of know that one because that's a popular owl bird sound. Cool. All right. The blue jay. Oh, I love blue jays. The harsh squawk of a blue jay is one of the many varied sounds this striking bird can make. Like all members of the crow family, so it's a kind of crow. I didn't know that. It is intelligent, which means smart, and can imitate sounds of other animals, especially hawks. As many raptors feed on blue jays, this may be a method of testing out whether there are any lurking nearby. Pairs of jays communicate while a soft series of clicks. So this bird, because it's kind of a crow, can kind of pretend to be another bigger bird with its sounds. This is found in forests and urban areas, means cities. It feeds on insects, spiders, and fruit. It's nests high up in tree branches and it lays two to seven blue or brown spotted eggs. All right, let's listen to the blue jay. That is a squawk. It's a very squawky sound. Okay, next up we have the American robin. Oh, these are very popular. We see these a lot. So, the American robin. This will be one of the first birds to sing in the morning and often one of the last of the day. So it sings early and late in the day. In winter, large flocks gather to forage for food and mainly fruit and to roost. In the breeding season, which is spring, both the male and female sing. The male barely pauses for breath as he performs his clear, tuneful song. Both parents help with the babies, but only one, um, but one does most of the work. They're found in backyards, parks, and woodlands. It eats worms, insects, snails, and berries. It nests in trees or on the ledges of buildings, and it lays four light blue eggs. Robin eggs are really well known. There's even a candy named after them. Let's listen to the robin. I do hear this early in the morning. I bet you guys do too. I didn't realize it was all robins. It's a pretty bird too with its bright orange chest, okay? Northern Cardinal. This is the state bird of Virginia, the Cardinal. What could, what more could a bird do to make itself appealing than have a showy red plumage, which means feathers, and a fine musical song? No wonder this is a state bird of seven eastern states. So this is not only our state, Virginia's state bird, it's six other states' birds. The Northern Cardinal starts singing even earlier than the American Robin and can usually be heard from February onward. Listen for its pink, pink alarm call. 
It's found in woods, towns, and the countryside. It eats seeds, fruits, nuts, and insects. It nests in dense trees. It means it's hard to see them because they're in really thick trees and shrubs. And it lays two to five off-white speckled eggs. Let's listen to the cardinal. It's right down here. It's got a really bright red face. So that's the cardinal. Now we have the morning dove. There are a few sounds as soothing as the gentle coo, coo, coo of the morning dove. It is mainly the male that sings to impress a mate, puffing out his chest and bowing in front of her. You will often see these doves perching on wires or foraging on the ground for seeds. They have a long breeding season and six broods are possible. Oh, it has a lot of babies. It's found in everywhere except thick woods. So it really doesn't like the thick trees. It eats seeds and sometimes snails. It nests in trees and gutters and sometimes on the ground. And it lays two white eggs. This is the morning dove. Let's listen. Oh, that is soothing. It is calm and peaceful. Okay. The American crow. These large, sleek black birds are very sociable and they gather in winter in huge numbers to sleep. Groups of crows also work together to ward off to mean to protect themselves from other animals such as birds of prey that threaten them. This is known as a mobbing. The crow's song is a rasping ka ka ka, although it can make a range of noises, including pretending to make the sounds of other animals and birds. It's found in almost any open space. It feeds on small animals, seeds, and fruit. It nests in trees or on ledges of buildings, and it lays three to six green speckled eggs. Let's listen to the crow. Ooh. Very cool. Okay, and we have one last bird, the song sparrow. On finding a suitable open perch, the male sings out to attract a mate and to defend its territory, means to protect its home. This heavily streaked songbird varies considerably in size and color through North America, which means it could be really big, could be really small, it could have lots of different colors. It learns its song from neighboring birds, with females preferring males with the widest repertoire, meaning the birds that can make the most songs. Particular songs are repeated many times before the sparrow begins a slightly different melody. It's found in backyards, marshes, and thickets. Thickets are kind of like bushes. It feeds on seeds, insects, and fruit. It nests hidden in the grass, often near water, and it lays three to five green eggs with spots. Let's listen to the song sparrow. Very cool. So these are backyard birds. I mean, if you go on a, a walk anywhere near your house, these are some of the songs you're probably gonna hear outside because they live near our houses in urban city areas or in the woods. So thanks for listening to the bird songs with me. Now we can start our project. So in order to get a chance to listen and see some of the birds we just learned about, we're going to make a bird feeder. For this project, you're going to need a water bottle. I'll show you that in a second. Some paint. These are the paint I bought from the store and a paintbrush some scissors, some bird seed. You can use a plastic spoon or paper straws. I think this is a cute polka dot blue plastic paper straw, so I decided to use that. A funnel or a piece of paper to make your own funnel, and a water bottle. Now you can see I've already painted my water bottle. I decided to use warm colors like red and yellow and orange because they reminded me a lot of the birds in this book that have red on them, but those are just the colors I picked. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut four holes. After you paint your water bottle, you're gonna let it dry. See, my paint is all dry. Once it's all dry, you're going to cut four holes in your water bottle. You're gonna cut two holes for your straw to go through, and you're going to cut two slightly above them for them to reach, for the birds to reach the seed. So now I'm gonna take my straw, I'm gonna poke it through my water bottle until it goes all the way out. Oh, so close all the way out, oh, there we go, on both sides. This is gonna be the place where the bird perches or sits 
to get into the bird seed in this hole. Now that I've done that, now I've painted it, I've stuck my straw all the way through and I've cut my holes, I'm gonna do the fun part, which is filled with bird seed. So I'm gonna take my funnel. I don't have a funnel, I have a piece of paper, but you can make a paper into a funnel really easy. You just roll it like this. So one end is really narrow, which means small, and one end is really thick or big. Roll it, roll it, roll it. You wanna roll it really tight. Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay, and I'm gonna stick the narrow end in my water bottle and I have the thick end here. So see that? I have the one end here and one end out. Now I'm just going to carefully, I'm gonna put this here to protect it so I don't spill it. I'm just going to pour oh, some bird seed in. making kind of a mess. That's okay though. Oh, that didn't really work out, huh? That's okay. I'm just going to pour it in. And you want to keep pouring it in till, oh, see, there's the bottom of my bird seed. Now I'm going to pour it in until it goes right below these little holes so the birdies can get to it. Let me see if I can just pour it in through the bag. This might be a little easier this time. Nope. This will be easier when you have your mom and your daddy helping you too. Oh, there we go. Perfect. So now I have my phone. This time it should work great. Okay, I'm gonna have a big mess. That's okay though, because that's what a vacuum's for. Okay, there we go. Look, okay, so now I have made my bird feeder so the bird can sit on the end of my spool and can eat the bird seed right through the holes that I've cut. And then I'm going to put my top back on and I'm gonna hang it from my tree. I'm probably gonna put it near my window so I get to watch the birds when I wake up in the morning. All right, there is a very simple project. You're gonna um, take a water bottle, you're gonna rip off the cover and you're gonna paint it. You're gonna cut four holes, one on each side to stick your spoon or your straw through, and then one above the opening of your straw and your spoon. Then you're gonna fill it with bird seed. Try to do it a little safer than this Courtney did and make a little less of a mess, but mommy and daddy help you. You can do it on a tray, that's a really good idea. And then when you finished all of that, you can just hang it upside wherever you want. I hope you enjoyed doing your bird seed project and reading about birds. All right, bye guys, have fun learning. See you soon.